Philip Bateman, bravo, Charlie here with Chris McGrath from 5B at the Australia-China Renewable Energy Forum. Chris, that was a pretty amazing presentation and you're keyed into some pretty amazing stuff that's going on. Can we start with what is 5B and what is Maverick? Mm, sure. Thank you very much. Um, 5B is a technology business uh, based in Sydney and we're on a mission to accelerate the transition of the global energy mix towards clean energy. Um, Maverick is our flagship solution, which we believe will be the world's lowest cost, fastest and easiest to deploy solar power plant. Uh, it's a prefabricated uh, system that's built in a factory mm -hmm. um, and rapidly deployed on site, about 10 times faster than a conventional solar farm. And w what are the problems with traditional installation of solar? Um, we, we see traditional solar plants built in a, in a construction infrastructure mentality. Um, which really doesn't uh, respect the or, or reinforce the underlying elegance and simplicity of a solar panel, mm -hmm. which can produce electricity with no moving parts, which is kind of miraculous. Um, and, and really, we've tried to reinvent the way that we deploy a solar farm. We mm -hmm. specifically say deploy, not build, um, to, to really respect what a solar panel can do mm -hmm. um, and the simplicity of that. Um, so, so we're shifting from a construction mentality to a product um, production mentality mm. um, and really turbocharging that with production factory based efficiency and and scale and that opens up some innovative financing models doesn't it yeah absolutely it's one of the the really interesting parts of the solution is that because you have a, a prefabricated product that then is inherently redeployable mm -hmm. um, you can wrap security packages for finance solutions around that in, in, a, in, a, in a much more um, powerful way. Mm. Um, so for example, lease finance um, becomes a very real thing. So we're talking to lease finance providers about owning our assets and leasing them to mine sites in the same way that a mine site rents a yellow Tonka truck. Mm. Um, they can then rent a Maverick power solution. Um, so that allows us to compress contract periods down to, or commitment periods down to in the order of a few years, mm. um, which then removes kind of one of the last barriers to solar PV on mine sites, for mm. example. Um, so that's a pretty pretty rapidly growing market and, and a new direction for solar as well. Mm. And what came through in the discussions we were having is that um, conflation between resources and renewables, the resources industries and the renewable industries, which yeah. traditionally people have seen as like a hard line. Oh, mm -hmm. If you're doing oil and gas, mm -hmm. you're not going to be doing renewables, yeah. devil. Yeah angel kind of thing. You're, Absolutely. Your thoughts um, on that? We have a Texan oil and gas guy working for us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we, um, we recognise that, that there's a transition mm -hmm. that's required and by definition to transition you need to collaborate and diffuse knowledge and and um, kind of build a bridge between two sides yeah. um, so uh, absolutely starting from university in a solar degree we could get kind of militant in our ideas about oil and gas. Mm. Um, but I think now we see that, well, there's, there's a whole lot of grey in that area in terms of what industry needs to continue to do its thing. Um, so, for example, like um, the resource sector ex extracting metals mm. to use in solar panels or mining is not bad. It needs to be done in a, in a responsible way. And part mm. of that responsible way is to, to use renewable energy um, to power it. Um, so some of, our, some of our biggest projects to date have been on oil and gas sites. We power... Mm. Um, some of Santos's oil wells in the Moomba Basin mm -hmm. um, with solar, um, somewhat ironic, um, but it's a really interesting kind of application. Um, we power a, an oil transfer terminal down in uh, South Australia for Santos. Um, we're building solar on a gold mine in Western Australia. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to deploy a, solar f a small solar farm on a coal mine in Kalimantan in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, so really the full spectrum. But we, we do see that as a transition and, and that's a starting point to start to transition away from fossil fuels and towards renewable energy. And you mentioned by having this easily deployable energy solution, it creates really a new way of looking at industrial deployment. Mm. Could you touch on mm. that? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we do, um, I, I guess, immodestly describe what we're doing as a paradigm shift mm. because we see that on multiple levels, on a product level and on a solution level and on a financing level, and on a design and applications and customer experience level, mm -hmm. the idea of getting towards a fully modular, pre-engineered solar farm in a box is mm -hmm. an incredibly powerful concept. So I think uh, originally as technology developers, we decided we wanted to make a solar farm that was really quick and fast to deploy. Mm -hmm. But now as an evolving business, we're actually discovering um, some, some deeper 
kind of power behind the technology solution um, from all of those kind of broader aspects. Mm. And, it, and it really starts to unlock a lot, of, a lot of different benefits and a lot of different ways of doing things. Mm. So for example, in, in our vision of the future, um, you go to the 5 website or the Maverick platform might be branded with our customer's brand. Um, and you'll be able to design, scope, price, procure, um, and have delivered a Maverick solar farm all online, all through a platform that is um, fast and easy and quick to use. Mm. Um, so some of it's actually becoming about tackling the soft costs behind projects and the kind of barriers to, to uptake, mm. um, as well as, but doing that with a hard product that does something powerful as mm. well. I was interested in one of the other presentations where a gentleman was talking about the might have even been yours that the cost to maintain assets mm. is going to get to a parity point where it's simply cheaper to install renewables on yeah. top of it. Yeah. And that to me, I've been in power stations and things, listening to people talk about the how basically because they keep selling the power stations to different owners, nobody's ever doing the maintenance on them. Yeah. So we're getting to this point where a lot of the coal assets are just gonna they're just grinding to a halt essentially. Absolutely. Um, and one year of operational cost is much cheaper to. Just put solar in. Yeah. Totally. Um, looking at your deployment video, which I'll include in a little corner so people can mm. just see that. Awesome. Um, what do you do when grass grows under the panels? Uh, we use robots. <laughs> so to your point about O&M uh, mm. or, or, or maintenance, operations yeah. and maintenance, um, we, we really try to tackle the solution from a, from a cost of energy perspective rather than just a capital cost perspective mm. because we have a low, lower yielding system and therefore we're kind of shortchanging someone if we just say, oh, it's cheaper because mm. it's cheaper it produces less energy but over the life cycle of the project mm. um, you have a cheaper cost of energy um, from that equation yep. part of the cost of energy is life cycle costs of the asset mm -hmm. um, and interestingly as uh, in one of the slides i was talking about um, inflating labor cost bases in different markets in solar pv um, uh, projects the capital cost is reducing uh, mm -hmm. much faster than the O and M or the OPEX cost is reducing because yeah. that's more pegged to, to labour, which is inflating over time. And therefore, um, innovative methods around O and M, mm -hmm. including use of robots and automation or more sophisticated tools and imaging, drone images and, and um, AI or machine mm -hmm. learning, for example, um, is definitely an a, a important part of our ecosystem as, as we grow the technology mm -hmm. um, to, to include not just the underlying prefabricated folding solar farm, mm -hmm. but the whole suite of um, s solutions and platform that you need to operate that mm -hmm. to produce low-cost energy for its life. Mm -hmm. And to go back a little, your journey to commercialization Oh, as a business, mm. um, so our, our 2013 you started. Yeah, our our light bulb light bulb moment happened in a in a paddock in Western New South Wales, um, which consisted of a couple of solar panels kind of resting against each other, mm. um, and then a long drive back to Sydney with the creative juices on 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 overdrive. Um, so your was that a group of you? Uh, myself and my co-founder Eden mm. Ten. Um, and we, from, from there on, had a burning hole in our brain and needed to, to, to explore that and develop that. Um, and then we started with backyard prototypes. Then we had a, a dusty sand quarry workshop in a shipping container mm -hmm. on the outskirts of Sydney. Um, then we had a, a, a small old panel beating workshop in Marrickville and then a pilot production facility, and then a 3,000 square meter production facility. And now we're actually starting to, it's gonna say ramp back, but we're starting to focus and tailor more of what we do um, per our model. We now work with ecosystem partners that assemble our product for us to allow us to focus on R&D um, and pilot production and where we add most value. Um, we, which is an exciting time. It's allowing us to, to not do so much heavy lifting around all the parts of our supply chain and also develop some really powerful collaborations with people that are better at doing things than we are, such as manufacturing. Mm. Um, Switching to an ecosystem model isn't a mm. traditional linear growth curve. How did that smarts enter the business? Um, as in, where did the idea for the yeah. ecosystem model come when from? When you step back and go, hang on yeah. a second. I, I think that um, it's it's been a... The idea of licensing the technology has been mm. fairly core to our strategy for a long time, mm. but we didn't really identify that as being the full ecosystem model that we can describe now, mm. um, and, and which will continue to evolve, of course, for, mm. in, into a much more ma mature model in time um, in, until I'd probably say the last 12 to 18 months. Um, so I guess now we recognise that 
it's not just a license in a product to a manufacturer, mm. but our ecosystem actually consists of the input components and manufacturing those, the assembly process, the deployment process, mm. um, the value-added reseller process, which is sales, marketing, project scoping, design, mm. optimization, etc., um, and then asset ownership and, and operation side of things. So we identify each of those roles as ecosystem partners and functions that we're developing internally the blueprint for mm. to then be able to externalise to those partners. And so you've gone beyond a concept, haven't you? In what countries are you now? Oh, so we've, we've, got, we've built projects in Australia. We've got our first project uh, sold in Indonesia that will be on the ground early next year. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got sales offices in uh, South Africa and, and Germany mm -hmm. um, and some uh, interesting partnerships that are um, developing in, in the US and um, North and South Americas as well. Yeah, wonderful. And there's an Australian startup, there's an Australian tech hardware startup. Mm -hmm. um, you're now at a capital raising phase. Is that the case? That's right. We're going through our Series A. Mm -hmm. So we've done a series of seed rounds over the last um, five years. Mm -hmm. The first two years were a bit slow. We are doing R&D in a backyard. Yeah. Um, and the last three years, we've been growing pretty quickly. We're mm -hmm. 30 people or so now, so um, maturing quickly. And, and I guess the, the position we see itself now is that we have a, a proven technology, commercialised technology, a uh, very clear picture of, of the model and validation of the model that we want to use to grow that around the world. Um, and now we need cash to, to propel that and to propagate that around the yeah. world, which is really exciting um, juncture to be at as a business as well. Yeah. Mm. Which brings me to mm. a batshit crazy project where the engineering checks Check out. I'm <laughs> so excited about this. Please tell, tell people who may not know. The Sun Cable project yeah. is a batshit insane project, which the engineering checks out on. It's a, uh, it's a, it, it's a customer and partner of ours that's mm -hmm. developing the project. We can't claim the credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, however, we're the preferred technology for it. Um, so we'll be <laughs> building for them the world's largest solar farm um, in about four years' time. Um, it's a 10 gigawatt solar farm um, in Northern Territory mm -hmm. of Australia, uh, exporting power to Singapore via a 3,800 3, kilometer um, high voltage DC power link. Mm. Um, similar to what's between uh, uh, the mainland and Tasmania, the yeah. Basslink, um, just a much larger version of that. Yeah. It's also got 20 uh, gigawatt hours of battery storage, mm -hmm. um, mainly at the Australian end and some at the Singapore end. Mm. Um, so so it, it really is a lighthouse project for the industry and for Australia as a country and what it can be doing with its, its renewable energy resources. Um, and, and for us, it's a very powerful North Star to, to our vision and our roadmap for our technology. Mm. We've started in a small sand pit of Australia building mm -hmm. projects all over the country um, and therefore um, can be mistaken for that being our target market, whereas mm -hmm. our mission has always been to build massive solar farms at the lowest cost possible. Uh, and this project really exemplifies that for us. Wonderful. And just to touch on, if you didn't realise the cable would be running under the sea to Singapore because there's a big ocean between Australia and Singapore. And um, really, first wave to next wave of solar, mm. what's mm. going on there? So, so we see this as really underpinning the paradigm shift or driving the need for the paradigm shift that, that we are, are, are driving. Um, which is that historically solar PV modules has been uh, very cheap, mm -hmm. low cost, coming down um, dramatically and that's really driven all of the well not all but a lot of the growth in the solar PV market mm. that's now at 100 gigawatts or so of scale which is incredible and massive and no mm. one could have quite predicted that um, 10 years ago well, I'm sure a few people did but the broader market certainly didn't um, however the the balance of system side of projects the construction costs the steel the concrete the deployment the labor mm. the cabling everything but the solar panels and, and perhaps the inverters um, is not dropping at anywhere near the same rate. And we kind of describe a little bit cheekily that the balance of system side of the industry has been a bit lazy and it's kind of ridden on the coattails of solid PV cost reductions. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to change that. Yeah. So, and that comes back to our philosophy around saying solar panels are a simple commodity product come out of a massive factory. We should be building those projects in the same way. Um, and that's the best way that we can respect the underlying elegance and low cost of that commodity product yeah. to deploy it into the field in a commoditized, productized, scalable way. Um, and therefore converting the construction exercise into a, a product assembly and rapid deployment exercise. Yeah. 
because I've, I've been to the Trina factory in, mm. um, in China and seeing, oh, they've probably got many <laughs> aside from the yeah. one I was in, but yeah. the headquarters. And essentially your solution is including um, hinges between the panels and then concrete railings that they sit on with a steel ca tension cable so they unload to the relevant distance. That's right. And then you drop them on the ground. Yeah. And you can do that from the factory. That's right. So why wait for months worth of pillar pile installation and things? And our, our model really enables, um, we may not be working with solar panel manufacturers directly to produce our product. We may well be, depending on where the future mm -hmm. takes us. Our ecosystem model kind of allows us to do that if, if we want to and if they want to. Um, however, in a, in a physical sense, regardless of who's making it, it allows us to cut a hole in the side of the, the, the module factory, mm -hmm. um, convey modules across the road and be taking modules directly into a Maverick factory that is building solar power plant blocks rather mm. than just pallets of solar modules, yeah. um, which logistically is obviously awesome. Um, yeah. Less packaging, better, better shipping, um, streamlined logistics, yeah. um, and also results in the underlying product, which yeah. is then a, a very low cost um, building block to, to deploy a solar farm. So you can essentially diversify or increase the value capability of the module manufacturers mm. and leverage their existing scale. Yeah, whether it's a module manufacturer's doing it or a partner of ours um, co-located with them, time yeah. will tell. Um, however, either way, it's putting all of that time, cost and risk into a place mm -hmm. where it should be dealt with, which is in a factory. Yeah. And anyone who runs a, a, a factory production um, and has also had experience on a construction site mm -hmm. will choose a factory any day of the week for wet weather risk, um, access to labour, um, the cost of that labour, mm. um, efficiency in the factory, quality control, um, the list kind of goes on. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's a bit of a no-brainer once you start to, to yeah. run a factory yeah. rather than run a construction site. Yeah, you've got access to a lunchroom and a toilet. You don't have to do it in a field. It's, 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 nice. it's the simple things. <laughs> it's the little things. And it also, from an um, fr from a economic growth and, and a job um, creation perspective, mm. um, you know, solar PV construction jobs can be challenging. It's typically fly in, fly out work. They're in regional towns. There will be some regional benefit, yes, but there's generally kind of a migrating labour force that are mm. building these projects. Yeah. Whereas for us, we're able to provide long-term, consistent um, employment um, in a in a factory environment mm. that is ongoing and stable. Um, so we actually think from a, from a jobs um, perspective, it's actually a very interesting kind of transition as well. Yeah, because you can make solar manufacturing town and then ship it where it's relevant. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, for people who have watched this, what would you like people to get in touch with you about? What are you looking for from a business perspective? Um, we're right in the thick of our Series A at the moment. Mm -hmm. So investment is, is obviously kind of high on our priority list. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're interested in investors either from an impact investment perspective or from a strategic investment perspective. Gen genuinely, um, generally not um, just passive finance, but um, people that can really add value to our business as it grows mm -hmm. around the world. Um, and secondly, uh, projects. We want to build more projects. Um, we definitely like customers who are progressively minded and understand the journey that we're on and what we're trying to achieve mm. um, so that we can really work with them to realign their business and, and their customers and their customers' customers' businesses to, to wield the power of Maverick in the best way that it can be. Um, which for any new technology is not always a, a straightforward exercise for the first one. Yeah. But every one of our customers comes back for more because it's once you've done it once, it's faster and easier and, mm. and simpler to just continue to run. I guess I've just described the perfect customer that we're looking for, but there's um, no harm in asking. So. Absolutely. Well, that's the future. The future's here now. Get on board. If you're deploying assets and you need to power them because you do, Use the sun. Pretty straightforward, really. Well said. Thanks so much for your time, yeah? Thank you.